Before we get into this video, I know that over 50% of you are not subscribed to this channel. We've seen a large influx of people coming in this spring who aren't subscribed. So if you don't know, my name is Wade Murray. I worked in the lawn industry for over three years, and I'm here to give you lawn tips to get your lawn to look the best on the block. So please subscribe to Great Green North Lawn Care. Click that button down below, and while you're at it, click the bell icon so you get information, or you get notified every time I upload a video. Let's get into it. How's it going, Nate? Welcome back to the Great Green North. Welcome to the big announcement. Today, I finally get to share you guys what I've been keeping a secret for close to six months now. So let's get right into it. I'm going to tell you what's been going on here, uh, where the, the new series of videos that's going to be coming out. I've been putting out a lot of hints. So if you guys follow me on Instagram, uh, link in the description below will be up on the screen here. Uh, it's at GGN Lawn Care. You guys can see real-time updates of what I'm doing in the lawn, recording videos, behind the scenes stuff. So without further ado, let's get into the video. I'm gonna be telling you what's going on in the yard. So I guess I've kept it a secret long enough. What I'm doing is I'm installing an in-ground irrigation system in my backyard, only in the backyard, because we have some landscaping plans we're gonna be doing in the front yard, and I'm gonna be telling you all about it. Probably in the, it's probably gonna be a four-part series. We're gonna be talking about the planning stage, that's this video. Then we're gonna be showing you install, and then later we're gonna be showing you, you know, everything about it. So first of all, let's talk about how I decided to put an uh, irrigation system in my backyard. So this all kind of started one January night. You know, uh, I've been irrigating at this property for the last two to three years, which is when I really got into lawn care, when I started working in the business. And uh, I was irrigating it by hand, which is very time consuming. And overall, in a week, it took me almost 10, maybe 12 hours to get through the whole yard uh, with a sprinkler. And then uh, in the last couple of years, I've really started to notice how inefficient regular in-ground impact sprinklers are and oscillating sprinklers and how uh, much water they really do waste. Uh, and because my yard is so big, this wasting is on an even larger scale. So sometime this summer, I decided that it was time for me to take a look at ways to make this more efficient. Now, here's your regular traditional impact sprinkler. These were invented sometime in the 1950s, and what, how this works is it has this little arm that comes back and hits this, and it sprays water out. However, when this arm interrupts the stream, it causes a lot of misting and spreading, just not the most efficient thing. In the 1970s, Rainbird came out with what is called the compact rotor. Uh, this is a rotor sprinkler, the same ones that are going in my system in the backyard, the Rainbird 5000 series. These are the 5004 SAM rotors, and these are a professional grade rotor. And the way this works is it has a pop-up spring inside that goes inside this case, and this spring acts as a retainer that then pops up the head that just sprays the water out in a nice gentle stream, a lot more efficient than those little heads. So that night in January, while I'm sitting around looking for more efficient ways to water my yard, I stumble upon rotors. And I know that there's kits that you can add on top of rotors to put them in stakes and water your lawn above the ground. So that's what I decided. I was gonna buy a whole bunch of rotors. I was gonna buy maybe three or four. I was gonna get stakes. I was gonna attach them with hoses. I was gonna move the hoses across the backyard and I would be able to water the yard in the backyard about half the time. However, I looked at prices of hoses, and in one night, I'm not joking, I planned the entire backyard irrigation system, simple out, not even expecting to do it. However, the more and more I planned it, the more and more it just seemed right to do it. And let me tell you why. So because these rotors don't have an impactor that interrupts the stream, these rotors are way more efficient than these impacts. And these rotors can save up to 50% of the water that these impacts use. And that is just seen, with one of these impacts, it took me almost 10 hours to water my backyard. With these rotors installed in an in-ground system, I can have a, a full inch of water down in under four hours. So that's less, more than half of the time, cut in half, reducing on your water bill, reducing on water savings. Now, you're all probably all saying, yes, Wade, it reduces your water bill, but what does this cost? This is the other thing that blew my mind. One of these Rainbird 5000 series rotors is about $24. I got them for a little bit cheaper because I ordered them for bulk from irrigationdirect.com. I'm doing a big shout out to irrigationdirect.com. They're local to my area. If you live in the GTA and you're looking for irrigation parts, order from irrigationdirect.com. They are awesome. 
there was a little bit of a mistake in my order. I called them. They, they just figured everything out. They sent it right out to me in the next day. No questions asked. They are awesome. The people at Irrigation Direct, thank you for all your customer support. I'm definitely going to go there again. I'm suggesting any of you guys in the GTA area looking for irrigation parts, go to Irrigation Direct. They have everything you need. So at this point, it's a no-brainer. And with less than a couple weeks, we decided to install in-ground in my backyard. And honestly, I can't recommend it to anybody else enough. I haven't even began using my system. At the time of recording this, my system's halfway installed. And uh, just looking at the way things run, looking at the simplicity of it, the time savings, the water savings, I cannot see in what world in-ground irrigation will not, you will definitely get your money back for what you pay for in-ground irrigation, DIY or professional. So let's talk about how I decided to do it myself. As I said, I worked for a lawn care company for about a year and a half and I also worked uh, at a golf course for a year and a half. And at both of those places, I did minor irrigation repair. Uh, the irrigation system at a golf course is different. It's a commercial system and it's a lot more water, I'll tell you that. But I, I had learned a little bit about irrigation. However, as soon as I started diving into it, I realized that it's not that hard. And let me show you uh, all of this simply boiled down right here, how everything works. Starting at the house, you need the brains of the system. Now, most systems, uh, professionally installed systems, are controlled by manifolds connected to control loops. These are wired, normally 12 volt, uh, so the same as deck lighting or any sort of low voltage outdoor lighting. Now, because my system is only in the backyard at the time being, we have uh, landscaping plants in the front yard, that's why we didn't do that part yet, uh, I do not have power back there. So the problem that we have is I don't want to put a manifold in and then have to move it when I go to put my front yard system in and I don't have anywhere to put my controller. Ideally, the controller would be in the garage. So my system is controlled by one of these. This is a Melnor timer. These things are awesome. I've used them for a couple years now. Just the single port ones, the one that I'm using on my system is a four zone timer because I have four zones in my backyard. Uh, so what I did was I put a splitter on my hose outside, I added another sprocket on the front of my deck and I connected this Melnor timer to it and this is the brains of the system. This is going to operate my entire system for under $100. That's right, a four zone Melnor timer is under $100. So definitely if you're a DIYer looking to install irrigation on the cheap, especially if you're on a yard that's like not an acre like what I am, this is definitely a very simple solution to install in-ground irrigation. So the next thing you need to use is a pipe. Uh, you can use polyethylene pipe or you can use Schedule 40 PVC. I decided to use polyethylene pipe because it's flexible, so there's more forgiveness in the way that you dig your trenches. There's less uh, problems, there's less need for 90s and everything like that. This pipe will come out of your timer, run underground to what will be a T like this where you're gonna have your connection. So this T is going to be underground like this and then you will have your rotor or whatever emitter you decide to attach, a spray attached to that, just like this. So this is what an in-ground system looks like from underground. Your soil is going to be right here. All of this is buried underground and you will see this in later parts of the video. I'm going to show you how to install every part of this. Um, all of this is buried underground. This is how your system works. The water comes in through here, it flows out to the next head and the water comes out of this emitter. So now that you know the basics of your system, I'm gonna tell you two things you need to do before you go out and start buying stuff. So first of all, you need to get a five gallon bucket. You need to put that underneath your hose sprocket, crank that thing on and time how long it takes to fill that five gallon bucket all the way. Then you need to take that time and divide it by 60. So that's gonna allow you to figure out your gallons per minute coming out of your house. So let's say it takes 60 seconds to fill up that five gallon bucket all the way. That means that your house outputs five gallons per minute. So the way this translates to the head is as you can see in this chart, each head in a row can only put out a combined of what the flow you're putting in. So let's say five, I have five gallons uh, per minute flowing through this line and I have this one head on this line. That means that this head can put out a maximum of five gallons per minute. Let's say I split it and I have two heads on this line with a flow of five gallons per minute. That means each head puts out 2.5 gallons per minute. Let's say I have five heads on this line. That means that each head only puts out one gallon per minute. So the, the flow of water is split 
by each head. So the second thing you need to know is pressure. So the way that rotors work is the pressure in the line pushes the head out of the ground and that's what causes them to pop up like this. And then they drop back down when the pressure is released, when the water is turned off. So at an operating, when while your system is operating, you need to know what the pressure of the system is going to be while it is operating. So this is a little bit more tricky. You need to go out and buy a pressure gauge, take your stagnant pressure, and then normally drop it by half will be the pressure that your system will have while operating. So in my case, I have six to eight gallons per minute coming out of the house. I have about uh, 60 PSI stagnant. When the system is running, it drops to about 20, 25. So in my case, that means I have 25 PSI at every head. However, because I have six gallons per minute, that means each head can put out a maximum of two gallons per minute. And then I look at this chart, and that is going to tell me my spacing about how far I can space these heads apart. Next thing, get out a measuring tape, measure your backyard, decide where you want your zones. The biggest thing is you want head-to-head -head coverage. You wanna make sure that this head is throwing all the way to the next head, and that next head is throwing all the way back to the previous head to make sure there's no dry spots in that area in between because both heads are overlapping each other. So I designed my system very simply in one night after I found this, all this information from Rainbird. It was as simple as taking out a tape measure, measuring my backyard, which I did in the snow, because I'm nuts, and then putting it out on graph paper and planning it all out. It's as simple as that, folks. And then once the snow melted, I got a whole bunch of flags, I marked it out, I painted it out, and that brings us to today where we are going to be starting to install the system. So for those of you who are interested in installing DIY irrigation system, for those of you who are interested in lawn care, for those of you who have an irrigation system, you're looking to fix it, for those of you who just want to know more about irrigation systems and how they work, this is definitely the channel for you. Hit subscribe. My name is Wade Murray. I've worked in the industry for over three years and I'm going to be installing my own DIY irrigation system. Coming up, so hit subscribe. Definitely like and comment. And from the Great Green North, my name is Ray Murray. Thank you guys for watching. I hope to see you in the next video, which will be day one of install.